Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with a tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on the five different reasons as to why your keyless entry or key fob doesn't work. Show your support by hitting that subscribe button and help promote my channel by sharing your favorite videos on your social media pages. This is a fairly common question which people do ask me quite often, so I've decided to do a video on it to help answer people's questions. The video is based on reasons as to why the key fob or keyless entry doesn't work completely, as in the lock, unlock, panic, trunk, and door features all together. Starting out with the first possible cause. This one is usually the most common, it's a dead battery. If the remote was working previously, and you found the range of the remote was gradually becoming less until it finally quit, then the battery was wearing out. Battery replacement is usually fairly straightforward and there's no need to pay a dealer for battery replacement. When purchasing a new battery, be aware that some batteries may have been sitting on the shelf for an extended period of time. Therefore, after replacement, it may not last as long. So try to purchase a battery from a store where the stock tends to move quicker. Also make sure the metal retaining clips inside which hold the battery into place do have some tension. Otherwise, there may be a contact issue and the remote isn't receiving any power. Next is the second issue. Your remote needs to be reprogrammed to the vehicle. Some dealers will claim that this can only be done by them, but this is false for a majority of vehicles as long as you have one working remote. A working remote is needed amongst most vehicles to access the programming sequence for adding another remote. Only a handful of vehicles can have the remote reprogrammed by operating the key, accessing some pairing switch under the dash, etc. Procedures will vary between vehicles, so some of you will have to do a little research as to how it's done. Cause number three. The fuse has blown for the control circuit or the module of the keyless entry system. Refer to your owner's manual for the corresponding fuse, locate the fuse box, and then test the fuse. Use a test light while the fuse is in place or remove the fuse completely to do a continuity test using a multimeter. The fuse must be removed for a continuity test so we don't risk damaging any components in the circuit. Do not visually inspect the fuse as this is an unreliable method. The fourth reason. This is relating to the controller circuit, either the antenna, wiring, or a faulty module. Depending on the design of your vehicle system, you may have a separate antenna which can fail, any wiring may become faulty, connections can corrode, or in a rare situation the module can fail completely. Unfortunately, diagnostic procedures will vary between vehicles, but you can refer to a vehicle-specific repair manual, or there might be a common fault area to your vehicle which can be found through online sources such as car forms. And finally, the fifth cause. The remote can fail completely. Sometimes you can pull apart the remote and inspect the circuit board for any cracks in the solder joints. If you find a crack soldered joint, they can be resoldered. Other times, electrical components may have failed, and in order to determine that, beyond testing each component on its own, using a radio frequency tester. This is a specialty tool which determines if a keyless entry is sending out a signal when a button is activated. You can purchase these tools yourself, although they can be fairly expensive. A mechanic, electronics technician, or a locksmith may be able to do this for you. New videos are being uploaded every week, so show your support by hitting that subscribe button below the video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, and if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them. Thank you for watching.